Hey guys, and welcome back. Well, I wanted to do an update on that story about John Gray and the Relentless Church being evicted. Well, um, I did do some digging. Um, uh, uh, some of you had left comments saying that they heard that uh, Pastor Gray is not behind on his lease, uh, but um, at the last minute or, or not on record, uh, the carpenters asked uh, the Grays to uh, pay property taxes that were due, and that is where the conflict came. And um, I wanted to uh, let you know what he said. Now, he spoke out about the eviction, which he uh, denies that they're being evicted. And he, um, uh, the Relentless Church, uh, made this statement. Now, they say, they have not been served and they are current with every financial obligation as outlined by the leases they are under. Now, a termination letter referencing a false verbal agreement was sent. The letter did not, however, reference the actual signed lease agreement in which Redemption Ron Carpenter is in violation of not honoring, amongst many other things. The Grays are current with both of their uh, leases. Quote, unquote. <clears throat> okay. Well, you know, I don't know um, John Gray personally, but um, the Negro seemed to talk out of both sides of his neck. You know, if you've heard that old saying. And I guess you're saying, now why do you say that about Rev? Well, this is why I say it. Now, in March of this year, <clears throat> Pastor John Gray had asked his congregation to foot a bill for the repairs of the church roof to the tune of $250,000, in addition to us already collected for weekly tithes and offerings. So this was above what they are giving their tithes and offering. Now, uh, the request came after um, the pastor said Relentless inherited millions of dollars in debt when the church took over the building from outgoing Pastor Ron Carpenter, who moved his redemption uh, ministry to California after 25 years in South Carolina. Now, Gray broke down the church financial need um, on February the 10th by saying the roof repairs could be made if uh, 2,500 people gave $100 or more than half could be raised if 500 people gave $300. Uh, so he says, so now we need $499 because I got $300 on it. Anybody else? Now, <laughs> he also said the work must continue. This is not a plea for money. It's a plea for partnership so we can be what we're supposed to be. Now, Gray said the roof was put on uh, the building in 2004. He wanted to collect 250000 which um, that's the amount he paid for his wife, uh, Lamborghini, when she caught him cheating. But they, that's nevertheless. But he wanted the $250,000 from church goers, and he wanted it by April the 3rd. Mm-hmm. Now, it went on to say it's unclear on how much money has been raised uh, they said Gray and relentless CFO Travis Hayes declined to comment for this story. Uh, and also, you know, he declined to go into detail about uh, why did the Carpenters uh, want, uh, wrote an eviction notice, okay? Now, uh, Gray went on to say that, you know, when Carpenter handed us the keys, nothing was paid off. It was nothing paid off. Now, he said uh, in prior interviews with uh, him in 2018, he told the news that Relentless would not publish an annual financial report since the church is too new. Now, he said, yes, the ministry puts out a year-end annual report. Not always, but some years, he said. Now, he said Relentless has been here seven months now, so we're not expecting to do any annual report this year. This is a brand new church. Now, Gray himself said in February of this year that he believes Relentless will be debt-free within 24 months. 
He said we didn't take an easy assignment. If we wanted an easy assignment, we would start it from scratch without millions of dollars in debt. We took the assignment because we knew God has given us the right people to deal with. I believe uh, the best, uh, you know, is yet to come. So, um, and, and, and this is, I guess this is what I'm saying. Okay. Now, how did things just drastically change so quick? Now, in uh, March of this month, he had a good out, uh, look on the church. Uh, now, you know, Gray and the Relent- Relentless Church came back into the spotlight in January when uh, the Greenville News reported that Gray was living in a $1.8 million home in Simpsonville that was funded by the church. Now, church leaders said particular parsonage is what was needed to entice a pastor of Gray's caliber to Greenville. So, um, what went so bad and so wrong when he already said that they had uh, developed debts from the church? And uh, he goes from asking them, he told me he got <laughs> $500 on it and asking the church. But now, you know, you know, he, like I said, he had uh, earlier this year, he had a good outlook. They were going to be debt free. And it? And now he's saying something else. I mean, if, um, I think if a verbal agreement was known at that time, I think he would have been talking about, hey, but right here he said that he um, inherited millions in debt from the Relentless Church. So he was cool with that. He he said the guy was going to... Uh, you know, see the way and, and that he just needed the right people and now they're talking about eviction and now he's saying, oh, oh, I didn't know about all this other stuff that he wanted me. Uh, mm, I don't know, guys, but that, that doesn't sound mm, too well, gravy. But, and also, you know, when it first came out about, you know, him cheating on his wife, and um, they saying that it was that it was so bad that they were going to get a divorce and da 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 da. And then his wife said, "Oh, that was the devil. She wasn't gonna leave her husband." Blah blah blah. Then once that was all over, oh, and then he gave her the Lamborghini for uh, you know, I'm sorry, gift of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And then on top of that, now uh, he did a. Uh, when was that? He did the uh, first of the year. He did a uh, interview, and he said that you know he how did he put the cheating? Emotional cheating. That's what he did. Emotional cheating that landed him on the couch for a couple of nights. Hmm. Well, no, I don't think it was. I mean, you're you're trying to downplay it now, Pastor. You talk about a. So the guy just talks out both sides of the neck to me. I mean, ever since he's been in the spotlight, he's been having to defend himself of this. He defended himself when he, uh, when he met with the uh, Antichrist, Trump. <laughs> you know, he's a big picture of him meeting with Trump. He had to defend himself of that. He had to defend himself of the $250,000 Lamborghini gift. He had to defend in itself uh, with some four thousand dollar sneakers. I mean, he he. I don't know, guys, but this it just. Mm, we gonna wait and see. I know a lot of y'all saying that y'all thank God, da, 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 but uh, you know the the proof is in the pudding, so we will see if. And and don't get me wrong, I hope. If that's what God wants, I hope that they can get this all squared away. And I hope, uh, and you know, and I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring this up. I know I've been long-winded, but I'm going to bring this one up. You know, in the defense of his cheating and everything, I remember him saying this. He said, you know, when he came on Facebook and with the hood on and, you know, this picture right here. He was saying, you know, when y'all get in trouble, y'all got somebody to come to, y'all come to me. But when, when preachers get in trouble, we ain't got no one to come to. That really rubbed me the wrong way because I'm like, 
bro, please. I mean, you got God. We got God. You know, some people may go to their pastor, but I go to, I have a straight connection with uh, God Almighty. I don't have to come to nobody. And that's what, if you were called, you wouldn't have said no mess like that. Who do you go to? Who do they have to go to? You go to the Lord. So, I, you know, I guess a lot of people going to say, oh, you old fat. I'm, yeah, I'm old fashioned because I believe right now that pastors are not called. Pastor, this is a number game. This is a, this is an occupation, you know, where they can get big churches and, and, and stuff their pockets so they can buy expensive things and, you know. Uh, but yeah, I feel like if, if, if God truly called you, hey, to, to uh, be a, a pastor, uh, to be a leader, he will give you that strength. He will give you that strength and everything it takes to go with it. That's my opinion. What's yours? <laughs> All right, guys. Let me hear from you. Good, bad, ugly, don't matter. <laughs> I just love that you took the time and listen to my uh, editorial. <laughs> All right, guys. Always thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as always important, y'all, be blessed.